Hola, guten tag, bonjour. Do you know how to say things in other languages? You know what? I am not very good at, at different languages, but some people in my family are really good at speaking other languages. One day, the disciples all of a sudden could speak new languages. It was such an amazing day. Today, we are celebrating a big word. It's called Pentecost. And what it really means is we celebrate and have a party for the church because this is the day that we celebrate the church being born, the birth of the church. Place to, it's a place for people to gather and share God's great big love with each other. It's so exciting. Well, our rural friends are in a classroom and they're drawing pictures. Let's see what their pictures are all about. Check out my drawing of the disciples. Oh, careful! They've got fire really close to them. Yeah, I drew it there. It's the fiery tongues that show up in their story. That's pretty good, Adeline. But check this out. Ah, house tornado! An emotional response for my artwork. Just what I was hoping to inspire. Thank you, Clarabella. Clara, it's all right. These are the things that happened in the Pentecost story when the Holy Spirit showed up. What did you do for your picture? I drew the disciples a couple of days after all the scary stuff happened on Pentecost, and they've come to terms with being able to speak all languages. That's Matthias eating a sandwich. Um... Wow, Clara, I was under the impression that we were supposed to show the disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit, not cold-cut sandwiches. I did draw them filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's a grilled cheese sandwich. Then, where's the Holy Spirit? It's inside of them. Yeah, but you see how in our pictures, they have fire and powerful winds rushing all around them. Your picture doesn't have any of that. No, I just wanted to draw what it looked like when the Holy Spirit fills me. And it usually looks like this. Fills you? What do you mean, Clara? Yeah, you can't speak all languages or heal the sick like the disciples did. And I've never once seen you cast out an unclean spirit. No, I guess not. Oh, but when I was too scared to go on stage for the talent show last winter, I hid in the costume rack and wasn't going to come out until it was all over. But when I got pushed out on stage, people thought hiding was my special talent. And I just felt inside like, Clara, you can totally do this. And then I did. I have no memory of that. I remember. So you think that was the Holy Spirit, Clara? I think so. Pastor Donna says that the Holy Spirit inspires us, and I was pretty inspired. So it's kind of like the time I was sick with the gerbil flu. Monty made me a greeting card that had everyone saying how much they missed me. Ada, this is one of those cards where you can record your voice. Ada, Ada, should I come out of this coat or not? I need your advice. Ada, come back. There's no balance to my tricks without you. You were sick? I don't remember that. Where was I? I felt so moved and loved by you all that I started feeling better. Do you think that could have been the Holy Spirit, too? I think it might be. But none of that stuff sounds as amazing as fire that doesn't burn you or a tornado in your house. No, it doesn't sound amazing, but it really felt amazing. But those things could happen anytime. To anyone. You're right, Victor. Anyone can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Victor, good point. You really get this Holy Spirit stuff. Have you ever tried something that you didn't think you could do, but you could do it? I bet you have because you are amazing. Sometimes I try things and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this, but then I can. It's so awesome. 
You really need to believe in yourself because you are amazing and you can do anything that you try. You might need a little practice, but you can do it. Let's read our Bible story. We're going to read from our World Story Bible, and we are going to read out of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Our story is called A Gust of Wind. A gust of wind blasted through the house and into Jerusalem. The disciples jumped from the tables. Andrew grabbed the bread. John and James grabbed the cups. The tablecloth flew through the air. Plates crashed to the floor. The disciples were celebrating the festival of Pentecost, but now their meal was a mess. Andrew dropped the bread in surprise. A flame of fire floated above each disciple's head. The flames were bright red and orange and yellow, but they were not hot. Andrew pointed to the flames. Look! The disciples looked. John and James dropped the cups. Peter and Simon's eyes grew wide. Bartholomew's and Philip's mouth dropped open. Matthew and Thomas, Matthias, Thaddeus and all the others jumped. James pointed to Andrew's head. You have flames too, our friend says. And this is why you should close the windows and doors while you're eating. Suddenly, the disciples began to speak in different languages, Latin, Greek, Arabic, all the languages of the world. They rushed outside. We are filled with God's spirit, shouted Matthew. God is the ruler of all, Philip exclaimed. The street filled with Jewish people from many countries who were celebrating Pentecost in Jerusalem. Every person, no matter where they had come from, heard the disciples speaking about God's power in their own language. The people couldn't believe their ears. Some in the crowd sneered. They could not believe that the disciples could actually speak in all the languages. But many people were amazed. Peter yelled, each of you hears our words in your own language. God's spirit has made this possible. So the disciples could suddenly speak all those different languages. I've never heard of that superpower before. Isn't that an interesting Bible story? It's another one of those mysterious stories that we hear about. We hear these stories about God's great big love does really amazing things. And how weird would it be to all of a sudden be able to talk in different languages and see flames of fire dancing on other people's heads and not getting burnt? That had to be God, right? What else could do something so amazing and beautiful and powerful but God? That's what the disciples thought too. It's amazing. So today is the day that we celebrate. So if you want to celebrate and find some cake or ice cream or just a cookie or treat, do that and remember that God's love is so big and we can share that love to make it even bigger. Well, I have a challenge or a game for you to do instead of a craft. I got a cup just from our play area and then I got a scarf that was red. You can find a red um, cloth or sock or even paper and shove it in a, um, in a cup. And then I thought we could try to balance it on our heads. And how long can you balance the flame on your head? Can you walk? Can you make it a contest to see if other people can do it longer than you? I'm not sure how long I can have this flame on my head. And there it goes. Okay, my friends, have fun and have a lovely day and share God's love with everyone you know. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.